Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. Today we're going to talk about repeaters for prepping, and in particular cross-band repeaters. And this little marvel here, the Retevis RT23, a repeater in a handheld. But first I'll start by explaining quickly how repeaters work. Repeater operations are fairly simple. Let's take the case of having an obstruction like a mountain, a hill, or something between person A and person B. Well, you can communicate directly in that case. Well, there are exceptions, maybe 80 meters, you know, 3.5 megahertz, using a horizontal antenna, beaming your signal straight up and having it come back down the other way. That does work. But it's not very practical because, of course, if you want to operate on the 80 meter band, you're going to need a 40 meter, 134 foot antenna. It's not something you're going to deploy very easily. So what we do, well, what you will find in most cases in cities or any place where there are a certain concentration of people and, of course, ham radio operators, is that they install a repeater, which is a radio, actually two radios, that will receive signal from person A and retransmit it in real time to person B. And that allows, of course, communication. Most of those repeaters are operating on the same band. So if you have, say, this being a UHF repeater on 40, 430 some megahertz, both person A and person B will use a UHF radio on the same band. Now, of course, uh, it has to be a different frequency for receive and transmit on the uh, repeater. So this repeater here has two frequency, a receive frequency and a transmit frequency. And they are separated by a few hundred kilohertz. And that requires very sharp filters. So they're called cavities, uh, duplexer. And we're not going to get into that, but let's just say that using a repeater here on the same band, a single band repeater, is a fairly heavy installation. The biggest problem I have with repeaters is that they often don't have backup power. And I've asked many uh, repeater operators and most say, you know, no, we don't have anything like that. They don't have a plan, they don't have any uh, contingency plan for, you know, a long interruption of grid power. And when they do, it's usually just for a few days, you know, a generator or, you know, some batteries, but it's not going to last long. That's why I highly suggest not to count on repeaters for SHTF situations. Simply, you know, use them if they're available, but just consider that uh, there probably won't be once something happens. However, there are situations in prepping uh, SHTF situations, uh, crisis, when we would need a repeater. And again, you know, like I said, a single band repeater is a fairly heavy, expensive uh, proposition. So that's why we have this little guy here. <laughs> and this is a repeater. It's a cross band repeater. So it doesn't operate on the same band for reception and transmission because, you know, it only has one antenna and it doesn't have the sharp filters that would be required for that. So that would make it a gigantic radio and that's not practical. So basically it receives on one band and transmits on another at the same time. And that's awesome because you can just, uh, let's say, take this to uh, the local hill and uh, put it on top somewhere, hide it maybe with a solar panel and you would just have the whole region covered by this little guy. You could attach it to a drone, a balloon. I don't know, you know, your imagination uh, <laughs> is without limits here. You can try anything you want. Just the main thing is to get it high up where it will be able to communicate with many members of your group spread around. There are two ways to set up your crossband repeaters, which in this drawing would be this one in the middle. Uh, the simple way is simply to have the repeater receive on UHF transmit on VHF, but also receive in VHF and transmit in UHF, which means that you could have on this side person A with a UHF radio, person B with a VHF radio, and they can talk to each other, going of course through the repeater. So transmission and reception occurs on both bands, UHF and VHF. 
it goes both ways. And that allows you to have different radios to use the same repeater and talk together. Your second option for setting it up would have to use a VHF, UHF, so dual band radio for person A, and also a dual band radio for person B. And your repeater here is set up so that it receives on UHF. So both of these radios, person A and person B, will transmit in UHF. The repeater will receive in UHF and retransmit on VHF. And of course, radio A receives on VHF and radio B receives on VHF as well. So it's only a one-way retransmission. What's great also is that the uh, RT23 allows you to use CTCSS tones. Now, a CTCSS tone is a tone that is superimposed onto your voice that you don't really hear because it's a really low frequency, but that will trigger the squelch on the radio, so that would just turn the, the speaker on, basically, uh, and turn the repeater on when it's needed. So you can actually limit uh, who can connect to your repeater and retransmit on, uh, on your radio. Of course, it's not really highly secure because they could try every frequency in the list and finally they would find the right one and be able to transmit, but it would require some efforts. So you can make it much private, you know, so to speak, slightly more secure by using a CTCSS tone uh, set up with the repeater. Now, of course, uh, you're going to ask me, can this here be a repeater as well? And the answer is, eh, maybe. <laughs> what you could do in that case is that uh, if you're able to receive the repeater directly on this radio, uh, you could use your crossband repeater here simply for the transmit and transmit to the repeater and this repeater would of course repeat and send your signal uh, to a much broader area but you would have to be able to receive this repeater directly uh, so that would be a case when you're actually not able to reach the repeater directly because you don't have enough power but the repeater does and uh, you can hear the repeater but the repeater can't hear you in this case you could use this little guy here high up or closer to this repeater and that would work the way we're going to set this up is uh, go to the menu, menu. and uh, go to, uh, okay, well, I had it, <laughs> I had it right there. Go to relay and turn the relay on. So click on menu, click on, on, on confirm. and confirm. Now the relay is on. Uh, you see here that we have two little stars and that means that uh, it will receive and transmit both ways. If I had chosen the other way of using the uh, repeater uh, with one frequency for receive and one for transmit, you would have an R and a T. So I will uh, enter the first frequency and actually, well, that's the one I'm using. So 145.5 and here on the bottom, I will enter the uh, UHF frequency for uh, simplex. Four, three, three, five. Zero, zero. So we have the uh, TYT MD390 here, our Retevis RT23 crossband repeater, and the uh, new Retevis RT3S. This one is on VHF, this is our repeater, this is on UHF. Now, these two radios here shouldn't be able to talk to each other because they're on a different band, but look what happens. Oops, that's a bit loud. But this one just turned on. These two can communicate now. I'm going to lower the sound. Let's see. I'll do it again. I'll wait that the uh, screen turns off. And then I'll press the uh, PTT button on this one again. And you'll see that it will trigger the other radio. There we go. So these two are communicating, although they shouldn't be able to. But of course, they go through the repeater to do that. I'll try the other way. And again, it does work. Now, if I turn the repeater off, this one is not in the picture anymore, and I press the PTT button here, of course, it doesn't work because these two radio are on different bands. So if you had your repeater here somewhere on a hill, 
these two radios will be able to talk at a much greater range. And that's the advantage of the crossband repeater. You want to see how it works in practice? Well, let's try it out. The Lil repeater is both VHF and UHF. What I'm going to use is this frequency here. The repeater receives on 431.625 and that's the output frequency I'm going to set up in my RT23. The way I'm going to do this is here in the menu, I set up the repeater function to single, so it will not transmit and receive both ways. I set up the uh, frequency here, the receive frequency on 145.5, which is uh, of course VHF simplex here. And the, the transmit frequency, you see the T here in the middle, is set to 431.625, which is of course the input frequency of the repeater. Now if I go back to menu, menu, I have to make sure that I set up the CTCSS tone because of course I'm going to uh, need that to trigger the repeater. So, and it is, uh, they put that under CDC, I believe. Uh, I don't know what CCDC is, but uh, I think that R is receive uh, CTCSS tone and T is transmit CTCSS tone, which I did set up for the 167.9, which is what I have to do for my repeater here. So basically what will happen is that this radio here, my uh, RT3S, is set up so that I have simplex 2 meters here on top and a little VHF here at the bottom. So this is basically working as a VHF radio only. So this one will transmit, the RT3S will transmit. <laughs> You see, I barely received the uh, little repeater here upstairs. So anyway, this one will transmit on VHF. This one will receive on VHF and retransmit on UHF. So basically, this will be my transmitter to the repeater. And with this radio, I will transmit on VHF, but I will also receive the repeater directly on VHF without going through the RT23 <laughs> and I hope this makes sense but let's do it and it's raining of course the Lille repeater is about 10 miles behind me here but because of this sloping terrain I can barely reach it from here on the fifth floor and I know there is absolutely no way I could reach it from uh, down there. So um, let's try that with the uh, RT23 and see if it works. Uh, I'll try to trigger the repeater from downstairs. And now I'm downstairs, but I'm too low to reach the repeater in Lille. From up there, however, it should work. F4 WBY test. F4 WBY test. So I did trigger the repeater. It's not ideal because of course I'm receiving the repeater directly. So although the repeater has more power than I do, I can receive it. It's not the best. This crossband repeater is not designed of course to connect to another repeater. And I'm really pushing it here. It's designed to connect uh, to allow communication between two handheld radios and that it does extremely well. It's just that I don't have anybody around here to uh, talk to and show you that, but I do have big plans for part two. It would be nice if uh, on one side you could have a handheld radio and on the other side you could have a regular repeater with an offset frequency on the same band. But for us preppers, if we use a crossband repeater, of course, like this one, it means that our regular repeater isn't working. So it doesn't really matter. As you can see, a crossband repeater is a very useful type of radio. They also make uh, mobile radios like that, when you can actually leave your car somewhere and you go on a hike and your car will have much more power. Uh, transmission power than your little handheld and you can actually use your car as a repeater 
and that's pretty awesome too. But this little radio here, I would very much like to set it up in a watertight case with a battery and a uh, solar charge controller, a solar panel, and have a portable repeater. Now, that would be awesomely useful. Now, the uh, quality of the radio, it's... Uh, it works really well, you know, it's more like uh, on the uh, Bofeng level of quality, I'd say, maybe uh, slightly better. Uh, it's not as good as the uh, RT3S, for instance, which as you can tell, it has a better plastic. But f don't, f don't forget, this is a $50 radio. I mean, for what it does, it's really very cheap. <laughs> you know, a repeater for 50 bucks, uh, that's pretty much unheard of. So I'm going to uh, keep this radio in a uh, Faraday cage, you know, just a tin can, basically, and uh, until the day I need it, or, you know, who knows, maybe if I do something with my group and we need a, a crossband repeater, although they are not licensed, so not right now, but maybe later. But uh, this could be extremely useful, uh, and even in the, uh, you know, event of an SHTF situation, you could, for instance, use this in the US on a, uh, one side on the uh, uh, FRS frequencies and the other side on the MURS frequencies, you know, and that would work as a repeater, you know, you would have no trouble. I, I do think, really, that every prepper who has a communications plan should have a cross-band repeater, be it for mobile or, you know, I prefer portable, of course, you know me. Uh, but something like this is really a must-have, in my opinion, because uh, there is going to be a time when you're going to need it. Of course, there are other repeater solutions available, like having a repeater controller, which is a small box, costs probably about $30, and uh, you can uh, connect between two radios, and the two radios are controlled by the box, and one receives while one, the other one is transmitting, and uh, that works too. Uh, if you have less sophisticated radios, uh, you can use a simplex repeater. It's a repeater controller, same little box, but it has a memory in it and uh, it connected to the radio. While the radio is receiving, it records the message and then when you release the PTT button, your uh, repeater radio you know, goes back to, uh, to off, basically, to receive, and at that time, the repeater controller plays back the message, transmits the message back. So it takes twice as long, of course, and everybody has to wait that, uh, you know, you transmit, it, then it retransmits, and then you, you know, you wait for someone to reply, and then the reply is retransmitted, so it takes a lot of time, but if you only have single band radios and you don't have a dual band repeater, that's something you can use. So, uh, something I should have bought a long time ago, and now I have it, and uh, I'm really glad about that. I'm going to just to keep it in a box, you know, in a tin can, uh, as a Faraday cage, and uh, if I ever need it, uh, I'll have one. Have a good one.